never thought she'd have a chance Seeing him never saying much Always a hey yo, what's up Remember that night, 2 a.m. There she was, just a friend Unclear thoughts, wanting to know more That's why she showed up at his door My name is Lizzie Markey and I am a 20-year-old musician from Lemonster, Massachusetts. I got into music because my father is a professional jazz musician. His name is Mark Marquis. He's very well known around this area. Um, I grew up being by his side and watching him perform at different concerts of his. And I used to sit in our music room and just watch him and his band practice and listen and just enjoy. When I was about four years old, I started exploring with the idea of being a musician because I had one of those old uh, tape, tape recorders. So I recorded one of my dad's band's song, or them playing Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys with Scott Babineau singing it and I would just rewind, play, rewind, play and I drove everybody crazy around me listening to it. But then. When I was six years old, my dad started showing me stuff on the piano here and there, but then by the age of eight, that was when I first really started taking lessons from Anne-Marie Koivu. I don't have a certain genre of music, um, or at least not one in specific. Uh, I play all different types of genres. Uh, I like, I think my favorites though to play are blues and jazz, um, but I play everything from reggae to country to folk to whatever, you know. I don't only do cover music. Um, I do play cover music, but I do play my own original songs as well. The songwriting process, uh, for me, everybody has a different way of writing. Um, for me, usually the way I write is something will happen in my life, and that's kind of my way of dealing with different emotions. If I'm happy, I may go up to my music room and sit at the piano and just start playing a song, whether it's happy or sad. Um, I just write the music and go with what I'm feeling. Right now what I'm working on is, for the most part, just becoming a better musician. Um, on my piano skills and my vocal skills, um, I'm really shedding on my dad's original music because I'm lucky enough to be a part of his concert at the Bull Run in April. Um, so, but he has a lot of original music and most of it is very hard to play. So I've been working really hard on getting that stuff together. But I'm also working on my own original music. Um, I am exploring different sounds for my original music. Um, most of the time I'll play it solo and I'll only play it with the piano and the vocals. But I really want to get more of a band sound. So I am meeting up with a couple of musician buddies and they are helping me along the way with getting a great sound for my original music. The other band instruments that I'm including for my original music are um, drums, bass, guitar, maybe some horns. I'm not really sure yet. I'm kind of going with whatever comes to mind. The way that I control getting the sound that I want for my original music is um, you know, when, when I meet up with this band or whoever I'm playing with, um, the main focus is trying out different ideas and seeing what fits best with the song that we're playing. Um, all of my original, my originals don't have the same sound to them. They're different genres as well as, you know, my main outlook on music. I love doing all different genres. so. With my original music, I have some reggae, I have some pop, I have some blues, I have some, you know, whatever. Um, but when they come over, they're, they're helping me figure out um, what I'm hearing in my head for my own songs. The ultimate goal for this project is um, to eventually get to a point where I am able to record an album with these musicians or with these parts. Um, you know, hopefully in the near future, that's what I'll be working on. Um, but also to be able to perform a whole concert with just my original music. Um, you know, a lot of the places that I play right now, 
I'm playing different gigs at restaurants and bars and venues and stuff like that. Um, but at those venues, you can't exactly play all original music because people are out, they're socializing, they want to hear the, their favorite songs, you know? And um, so I want to get to a point where I'm able to put on a concert for people that want to hear what I write and um, be able to play a full night of my own original songs. Uh, is my dad involved in the process? Uh, yeah, of course he is. Um, you know, I I really look up to my dad, and um, I know that he's very smart, and he he has been in this business for a really long time. Um, so, you know, I I listen to anything that my dad has to say because I know that he's right. <laughs> um, so he'll definitely be involved with the process, um, you know, whether it's for pointers or, you know, he may play on a song or two, um, but he'll definitely be involved with this process. Well, what it's been like watching Lizzie grow as a musician and start playing is, has been interesting. She started out, um, you know, just like hanging out up in the music room when I do rehearsals and stuff. She's always around music. She's a, you know, child of a professional musician, so she's always been around it. But I think w what happened in her development is, is that she would she was always around it in the sense that at concerts, um, you know, up in the music room, she would come up and sit in the corner of the music room and listen to the band play, and and uh, and at concerts, she used to have a little toy guitar and she'd sit on the side of the the concert sometimes backstage and and participate in her own way. But the f the first real sense of of that there was something real cool going on was um, she. Um, after a concert, she had a little tape player a recorder that when she was about five years old, four or five years old, a little tape recorder that she learned how to manipulate. And, um, and she recorded us at an outside concert. And um, she would, for a whole summer, she would sing along with these two particular tunes that we had performed in the concert. And, um, and the first real interesting thing from the time that we heard her is that she was singing right on key, which most little kids don't do. She was singing right in time and right on key. So we said, okay, there's something going on there. And then from there, then from there, uh, she would, we would learn songs together. But I, I, one of the things that I remember is that like, I would teach her a song and I could only teach her like maybe the first A section because she would do everything from remembering the words and, um, and that sh the first song that she really sang was uh, Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys and she could only remember so many of the words so I would sit there and be very patiently let her do that part and I figured when she gets that part then we'll do the next part. Well, Playing, playing, playing with my band. Uh, I mean, you know, she came into that through. I mean, she she started playing with me, like, in different ways. You know, like a little bit at a time at first. You know, like sometimes we'd play a tune and she'd play the piano with us, or she'd sing at the Christmas concert, um, and. Uh, you know, and then she would gear up on some, you know, I mean, she took, you know, this, she took piano lessons when she was a kid and, and then little by little she started learning how to improvise and, uh, and, you know, and then she would learn some piece and we would play it together and, and, uh, you know, that stuff takes quite a while to be able to do. Well, you know, she, she's been doing enough now that like in her own development that like uh, what she's been doing lately, it's like I just kind of leaving her alone on it, letting it, you know, her, her do it her, herself. And, 
you know, uh, she has a good idea of the way she wants her songs to sound. And I think from being around musicians all her life, she has a good way of, I, I, I watched her communicate with, with other musicians, um, <clears throat> letting people know what to play and stuff. And, you know, it, it, it's not like when you grow up in an environment such as what she's grown up in, it's not like going, in, in one sense, it's like going to school for music, but in another sense, it's not because it's a natural thing. It's like you're around it, you see people doing it. So she has a, you know, she has a good way of, she, uh, what I've seen so far, she has a real good way of communicating with musicians and letting them know, um, you know, what, you know, her concept of, of, of the music that she's put together and she knows how she wants it to sound and stuff and, and that's that's a good thing. Um, you know a lot of times when musicians play there there are some music uh, a lot of good musicians if they're playing a, a original composition or something they don't always just want to jump into it and just play whatever they think you know like whatever they feel like playing, they want to make the music sound right. So sometimes if somebody has a good way of, of um, communicating what they want, um, then a lot of times it's appreciated because it gives them something to go on and, and, and head towards and then their creativity can, can, um, can do the rest. Um, but you got to have, I, I, I think, the, you know, it, it's good to have a good way of communicating. And in, and in her sense, in her sense, it's been a natural thing. She's been around it. She's seen, she's seen how some musicians communicate real good and some musicians don't com communicate so good. And uh, that's probably what's happening. Well, from the start to finish in Lizzie's, you know, Lizzie's done like a lot of different stuff like with singing and, and, and playing the piano and playing her, 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 you know all kinds of tunes and stuff. But in terms of um, what she's doing now with, with this, you know, she's learned some pretty challenging piano parts and she's playing, uh, you know, and she's had to learn all that stuff. As far as what we're doing at the Bull Run and what we get coming up at the Bull Run, we're, you know, we put together a show of, of um, a lot of my music off of my recordings and uh, and then some other things some uh, things by John Coltrane and um, um, different people you know a few a few different people uh, there's a lot of my music uh, Wes Montgomery and uh, and that you know just try to put on a, a varied show of, of great music with with real real great players. What else is happening in the meantime? Uh, like I said, um, just really gearing up for the next concert. Um, I've had a really busy year so far. I, I play shows most weekends, um, if not every weekend. Um, but right now I'm kind of excited because this is the first time that I've had a break in a long time. And so this is where I'm really focusing all my energy and learning Mark Marquis original music um, he has a lot of really cool songs and but they're very hard to play and they take a lot of time and effort to get them right so um, right now him and I we're playing together a lot we're practicing almost every day together that way we can really lock into each other that way we can make for an even better concert on the 16th of April that concert is one of my favorite concerts of the year um, it's going to be at the Bull Run restaurant in Shirley, Mass. And it is in the Sautel room, which is the big ballroom. And it has a big stage and it has lots of tables. Um, and it's this show, you know, he changes the show every year. So some years it may focus more on the guitars. Some years it may focus more on horns or piano or whatever. Um, but this year it's going to be really cool. And I'm looking forward to playing it a lot because um, the bandmates for this concert is going to be, of course, Mark Marquis, who's in charge, um, myself on piano and vocals, 
Scott Babineau on bass and vocals, Jerry Sabatini on trumpet, and Don Kirby on drums. The way I promote uh, concerts or my own gigs or whatever is coming next is mainly social media. Um, Facebook is very big for musicians. Um, many people will see band pages or artist pages, you know, um, and that's how I promote most of my gigs coming up. Um, I use Microsoft Paint to make flyers for my shows and um, that way I can put it up and I can post, you know, who, what, where, when, whatever. And then, you know, you can create an event on Facebook, which most musicians do. That way you get the word out, hey, on this date, you know, this is what's happening. So mark your calendars. Um, I also use Instagram a lot. Um, I use Twitter every once in a while. I'm not crazy about Twitter, but I'll use it every once in a while. Um, Snapchat, whatever way you can get the word out, that's what you do. You know, we post the flyers that we make at different stores around the area or wherever we can. You find Lizzie Marquis and, well, where she's playing or where I'm playing, you can find that on Facebook at Lizzie Marquis Music. It's L-I-Z-Z-Y-M-A-R-Q-U-I-S-M-U-S-I-C. And, you know, go to my page, like my page, and you'll see everywhere that I'm playing next or what's coming. With so many local musicians, the only way you can stand out is by having your own originality. Um, I think, you know, if you go to a restaurant or wherever that a local musician is playing, you know, they may be great, but somebody that does a song the exact same way that somebody else does it isn't going to get as much attention as someone that does their own thing with it or you know maybe puts a spin off of the song or something you know um, because people don't want to hear the same thing people want to hear something new something cool something that stands out so that's the only way that you can really stand out in a world full of musicians any dream with my musician life you know i'm not i'm not looking to get rich and famous you know um, my my dream is just to get my music out there you know I want to let people hear my music and you know maybe it will do something for them that it did for me um, you know like I told you about my original songs when I write songs there's a real meaning behind that song and I put a lot of emotion into my songs and you know if that if somebody else is feeling that emotion that I was feeling when I wrote the song then I hope that they can hear that and really know that someone else was relating to them from the start Didn't think you'd steal my heart I just want you to know That I'm able to let you go The times I won't forget I'm really glad we met So fly on like a dove and always do what you love.